Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. We're looking at Joshua chapter number one, and this is the fourth day of the month of February in the year 2019. January is gone, and I admonish you to go back and listen to the first two days of the month of February, just those podcasts to get you ready for what is getting ready to happen in this month. I believe this month we're going to see something pretty incredible. I think that we're going to witness a creation, not a creation of the world, but a creating or a recreating of what God says to us in the book of Romans. He says to us that we are not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed. And that means to go through a metamorphosis. Because Paul told us in the book of 2 Corinthians that if any man be in Christ, in Christ now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So the deeper we get in Christ, the more we're going to see right before our very eyes, God begin to form and create within us the person that he designed us to be because we're going to submit to him. This is not going to be a year like we've seen before as far as our our confidence in God, as far as what we achieve in God. So we're talking in the book of Joshua, chapter number one. Uh, we've stayed there for the first month of the year. We're not in a rush we're into what God said. He said if we meditate on his word day and night, it would bring us good success. Matter of fact, he says it will make your way prosperous and you would have good success. So the way to make our way prosperous is not just reading, not just studying, it's not just memorizing the word, but it is meditating on the word of God. And that's what we've done. It is so much in chapter one, but we're getting ready to move from chapter one. And we're going to talk about it because I believe the whole book of Joshua is teaching us how to live in the promised land, teaching us how to live on the other side of the Jordan. How do we live there? Not just go and visit, but how do we live on the other side of the Jordan? Because the 12 spies, they went and visited on the other side of the Jordan But 10 came back and said, we can't live there. They visited, but they said, we can't live. God has said to us, there must be preparation to live on the other side of Jordan. So when you look at what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 1, it says, after the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, I have given it unto you. So we're talking about going across the Jordan. When you look at chapter 1, it speaks about going across the Jordan and living there. And in verse 10 of that same chapter, the Bible says in verse 11, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days, you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess. Now, how do that translate to us, us today? How do we make it applicable to us? Jordan is the place that is the last obstacle before we move into our destiny, into the promised land and into the promised land so we can become acquainted with purpose. See, the promised land was only to get them to a place where they could start operating in divine purpose. Many times people think the promised land was the purpose. It is not. It is, it is the place where God wants us to be so we can start 
operating in the purpose. It was in the promised land that God was going to use the nation of Israel to evangelize the whole world. That was the purpose of God. So when we look at chapter 1, first four verses and then the latter verses, it says it's time to go over and live in the Jordan. Now, this was something that God had promised Abraham, if you remember, in Genesis chapter 15. He had told Abraham that his descendants were going to be enslaved for 400 years. That's in Genesis chapter 15, verse number 13. He tells him in that same chapter that they were going to cross over the Jordan. Now, we're, we're, talking, about, we're talking about over 800 years later. Think about that. We're looking at almost, almost, I'm sorry, we're looking at almost 500 years later, not 800, but almost 500 years later before this prophecy comes to pass, about 500 years. So now, after this long wait, after people that, that died in the wilderness, people that never seen the promise, these are the ones that are going to embrace the promise that God had promised them. One thing we must understand, as the Hebrew writer tells us, that there are those that have gone on before us that never embraced the promise. God fixed it so that they could not see it without us. So now, here we are, standing on the shoulders of other people, embracing what God has promised for centuries. And brothers and sisters, here we are in the 21st century, standing on the shoulders of the people that have brought us to where we are now. No one is here today without standing on somebody's shoulders. You had a shoulder to stand on to get to the place where you are now. So when we look at this, it is time to cross over the Jordan. Now, we're going to spend a great deal of time not just talking about crossing over, going through this last obstacle, getting to this point, but also how to live on the other side. I am not a visitor. This is promise for me. I'm not going to casually go over, survey the land, come back and say I can't live there. That's what the 10 spies did. We're going to live on the other side of the Jordan. You have a Jordan. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. You have a place in your life that divides you from what God has promised you before you was in your mother's womb. He says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be something that you are not now according to your time, but in God time, God had already seen it. So what he's saying to Jeremiah, like all of us have a Jordan experience, where you are now, you don't understand, but you're going to cross over. You're going to get past that obstacle, that Jordan, that fear, that, that trepidation, that terror that you have about standing for what God is saying to his people. You are afraid now, but you're going to cross over that fear. You're going to walk right through it. That fear, you're going to go right through it. And God is saying to us, that's what's going to happen. And the children of Israel came to this point 40 years prior, right on the border. But because they didn't believe they could live there, they thought they were just visitors. They didn't understand that they were designed to live in the promised land. They aborted that opportunity. And you know what happened. All of them that did not believe 20 years and above died in the wilderness. They died. So now those that are making across that Jordan, everybody didn't cross the Jordan. Everybody didn't get to the Jordan. 
the second time. The first time they did, but the second time. And I believe that some of us are looking at something the second time. And this is the time that God says, you need to go ahead and cross. You need to go ahead and cross your Jordan and move forward. Now, what is going to help us to cross the Jordan is to understand what we need to do. It is the knowledge that the book of Joshua brings into our lives. This book was written to teach us how to fight, fight. There's battles you got to fight to get to Jordan. And when you get to Jordan, you got to cross that. See, Jordan, when you look at it, uh, it was protected. It was protected. The enemy doesn't want you to get to your Jordan, not only to cross it. He don't want you to get to it. It was protected, and, and they had to fight to get to the point. They had to fight through an obstacle to get to a, another obstacle that, that they needed to cross. And God was there with them. And because of divine intervention, we see the waters of Jordan dividing and they're walking across on dry land. So important that we understand that. So we're going to focus in the month of February on crossing those Jordans that are in our lives. Those Jordans. Those things that are seemingly immovable objects uncrossable objects, mountains that seem like we just can't get over. But remember what the Bible says to us. He says to us in, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 23, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. You, you got to get that. You got to understand what's going on. We can speak to that mountain and that mountain will move. So we at the Jordan, the February, the month of February, uh, we're getting ready to cross over. And not just cross over, we are in preparation to know how to live there, to live there and we're going to give you some reasons, not just reasons, but we're going to give you some information that you need on how to live on the other side of the Jordan. It is an old promise. It is a promise that's over 400, over 470 years old, a promise that God made to Abraham. At this point, when they get to the Jordan, it has been a long road, but now that they're there, they're here. We got to get ready to go across. We cannot miss it the second time. So we're going to talk about seven things that I said seven things. It's going to be more than seven, but primarily we're going to look at and focus on seven things that we need on the other side of the Jordan. And these things are things that we need to need to understand before we cross over. Because if we don't understand these things, then when we get over, we won't be able to exist. We will, we, will, we will lose it. So God is preparing us totally on how to live on the other side of the Jordan. So as we move from chapter number one, chapter number one, we're going to move into chapter number two. And... We're going to get into some of the steps and some of the things that we need to know. Because God says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. We don't want to perish, especially in the promised land, especially on the other side of the Jordan. Now, let me tell you something. Once they got on the other side of the Jordan, they became slaves in the land that God promised them. And we're going to see that horrific story. And we're going to hear them talking about in the very land that God gave them, they had become slaves. That is horrific. That will happen if we don't learn how to live on the other side before we get there. God doesn't want us living a trial and error life. That's why the Bible teaches us in all our ways to acknowledge him and he will give us direction. So we have to acknowledge him. If we don't acknowledge him, we're going to be in for a, a rude awakening. 
but we got to acknowledge him. So I want you to get ready for that. I want you to get ready to study. Again, my friend, let me admonish you to go back and listen, to listen to the podcast. Go back and listen and as you hear God speak to us and things that he said to us in December and words that he gave us to help us as we came into 2019. Remember, remember the number nine, the number nine, the number nine. When you think of nine, 19, you got 10 completion and you got number nine, which is a number of finality. And once you come to nine, the next, the next, the next number is 10, which means you start all over. It was at the ninth hour that Jesus cried out, it is finished. We're talking about finishing, finishing, finishing this year, focusing on finishing. We've started many tasks. We've started many things. But this year is a focus on finishing and having the discipline, the discipline to finish. How are we going to do that? Well, we told you already. We come into this year with a sense of urgency, a sense of urgency. We are attacking 2019 with a sense of urgency. Won't be the same type of year. It's going to be a completely different year for me. How about you, friend? Is it going to be different for you? God wants it to be a great year for you. So get ready as we study God's word and move deeper into the book of Joshua. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank.